He wasn't going to announce till next year, and he was certainly going to be a Republican. He was. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Takeo Comfort Solutions. And then something happened. I mean, he was just here. He's back. I'll tell you, he did create a lot of noise earlier in the week. A well-positioned interview on WPRO and the Matt Allen Show where State Representative Joe Trillo announced, yes, that the 1% has finally come. The 1% part of the decision has finally been... Uh, <laughs> it's finally, he just lost it. Finally been conceived, and uh, the candidacy was born of a different brand. Uh, greetings, Kimasavis. Merry Christmas early. It is uh, my state of mind today on this Thursday evening. But before we get to the illustrious former co-chair, or still honorary co-chair of the Trump campaign, I don't know, I don't know how that, you know, he's a Trump guy. And uh, I think his resume as a state rep is far superior to that nonsense. Uh, Joe Trillo is with us. Al Franken took the hit. Here's the headline. Just before we taped the program today, Al Franken went to the rostrum and more or less said, hey, look, you know, I see these stories differently. Some of them are just not true, but the heat's on. Nevertheless, today I am announcing that in the coming weeks, I will be resigning as a member of the United States Senate. I, of all people, am aware that there is some irony in the fact that I am leaving while a man who has bragged on tape about his history of sexual assault sits in the Oval Office, and a man who has repeatedly preyed on young girls' campaigns for the Senate with the, with the full support of his party. Uh, I don't blame him for making that notation at all. It is an irony. Uh, the business of politics is tough, and the Democrats needed a political enema in order to be able to oppose Roy Moore, which they're going to do in full force. When Roy Moore gets elected, it is going to be a fill-in-the-blank show, uh, and they wanted their powder dry. It's as simple as that. Uh, on on Face value in comparison, Al Franken's pre-elective stunts. There have been no complaints about his behavior as a senator, by the way, in case you're scoring at home. i hardly compare. Uh, but we're not in a place where we talk about these things anymore. We're in a place where we fire first and aim later. Uh, actually, I think he's handled it poorly, uh, which is probably his own ownership as well. We'll talk more about it in ensuing shows as we discuss these things. In the meantime, let's come back home to the political scene here. This was, uh, well, this is a significant announcement that Joe Trillo made on the radio earlier this week. Running for governor as an independent. To win with my message in Rhode Island, I will need Democratic support, a lot of independent support, and Republicans. I'm not politics as usual. I'm for radical change in this state. This state is going in the toilet, and it can't get deeper in it fast enough. You elect Gina Raimondo, you elect Alan Fung, you got the same old, same old stuff going to happen. Okay. I'm here. I always congratulate candidates when they finally decide that they're all in. So congratulations. Thank you. Because it's a process. It is a process. And for you, it it's, really is a process. Yeah, it absolutely. For me, is. it's been a it's been a very, very long and a very difficult process. Well, clearly, because not less than a month ago. By the way, we just had it. You're gonna laugh. We just had. Uh, you've already been laughing, but we just had an argument. Were you not here last week? No. It, it was, was two. It was three weeks. It ago. was three or four weeks. Ago. Okay, you're right. I'm wrong. This is the latest. Can you say that we, had, we had. You're right, Lexi. I'm wrong. We just had an. Uh, I'm losing it. It might have been five or six weeks. No, ago. it was. It was no. It was November 14th because I thought maybe you had popped in prior. Hey, these things happen. But here's what he absolutely, unequivocally said on November 14th. But you're going to you're going to formalize your candidacy in January. Yeah. Will we know then? Is you know guaranteed that that this will be a Republican race for you, or yes. are you thinking about uh, sidestepping yes. it and going independent? No, no, that was something that was started by a group of people who were trying to convince me early on to do that. So you're so you're definitely going to be a Republican, I'm a Republican candidate. candidate. All right. Well, time things change. 
Things change. <laughs> it was November 14th. It was three weeks ago. No, it wasn't. It was four weeks ago. You know, here's what happened. Okay, now we're arguing about about right, well, weeks well, whatever, ago. Whatever. It's December eighth. Does it really matter? No. Okay, but you want to let's let's argue. It about was it less anyway. than a month ago. Yeah. Let me tell you something, how Dan. Do, how do I trust anything you're ever going to tell me for the rest of this campaign? <laughs> <laughs> you told me a month ago you're going to be a Republican, that it was just an idea I, that some people had, and you didn't want to. I had been. I toyed with in the beginning because people got my ear. I let it go. I said, no, I can't do this. I'm going as a Republican. I went all in, and I started to move in different directions that I needed to move in to, to see how everything was going. If I'd have stayed in as a Republican, I would have been Bernie Sanders, and I don't play Bernie Sanders well, okay? I don't want to get into all my problems with the Republican Party, but I'm not Bernie Sanders. Okay? Okay. Well, and it, here's what the happens thing. is once Everyone I on made the couch, that decision, everybody on the couch, other than people who really know you well and me, probably, are confused because your politics don't match Bernie Sanders. So what you're telling me you is, know what I mean. is that your your relationship with the party would have been strained. Yes. Why? I don't want to get into it because it's just sour grapes, and I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to shed sour grapes. Bottom line is, it's and it's not just that. It's it's also the fact that I feel as though my message needs to be mine, and I can't drag a party into my message. I'm coming out against illegal immigration. I am not for keep keeping business as usual. I want to reform schools. I'm sick and tired of the kids running the schools. You know, the other day you went on a rant. You sounded, you took the words out of my mouth on your rant. I, what's going on in schools today is nuts. The superintendent of schools, he's got to go. The things in have Providence. got to change in, in, in Providence and statewide. Right. Because we need to have somebody well, he's invited that's going to stick since, up. Since you mentioned it, I just don't want to keep people out of the loop. The, the Joe's reflecting on, I did have a rant on the idea that the Providence Teachers Union is, is, is complaining legitimately that they've lost control of the classrooms. Yeah. And since they have revised their DCYF, got a report, a, a rumor of sexual assault, or a complaint about such within 24 hours, what they're doing is they're, telling, they're sending the teachers on leave immediately it's and nuts. then investigating, and so the kids are getting a little joyride out of these faulty, hey, hey, watch to Mr. Smith, he's got to go because they said he, he twisted my arm or, or you know gave me a hug. I mean, that's really problematic, and I agree with you. I don't know if the superintendent's got to go, but they better strap it no, on No, no, see, there. but here's the problem. It's the superintendent's mentality that is that drives the train. I mean, if you have a leader and he believes in being politically correct, we've let this political correctness go uh, way, way, too far to the left and it's killing us it's killing our education system another example is you know I talk to teachers all the time I talk to a teacher that tells me she's trying to teach her classroom in Warwick and she's got non-English speaking students in there and 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 just to try to go at their level it's just a waste of time you can't have people in a classroom that don't speak or understand or write English and try to teach and and the other thing is the the discipline in the classroom is nuts. You got the kids basically have the teachers afraid to say uh, anything, or they or they're going to get thrown out, or they're going to lose their jobs. So somebody's been a teacher for thirty years, and and it's c gradually gotten worse. And now that teacher, after thirty years, they don't want to go start a new career. They want to get there until they can retire. Bottom line is the whole system needs to be so shaken up we can't be politically correct. Or tied to a party's politics. Or tied to a party, because when you tie to a party, you drag the whole party with you. <clears throat> it was also the timing issue, by the way. He absolutely was married to a 2018 announcement moment. I don't believe that this election cycle really has even got going. I think it's premature. I think you're spinning your wheels right now. And I think a little more time has to take place. We certainly need to get into the first of the year before we start to go out and, and sell our wares.
No, I still believe that it's you way do, premature do, for do, the election cycle. Yeah, but it's to scratch or something? Here's, or what, what, happens. what, happens. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. Once I made this decision, Dan, Oof. I had to get out of my skin. I had to shed it right away. I can't go look at people and face people and talk to them as a Republican knowing I'm going to leave the party. So once mentally I got there, I had to do it. It had to be done now. And that's what happened. And if you don't like it, lump it. We'll talk some issues when we come back. Stay with us. He denies it. Look, he denies it. He denies it. Roy Moore denies it. Okay, listen. That last moment that we had here, uh, we, we really did think that there would be an eye under your shirt. <laughs> I needed to shed! Shit! Like Lou Ferrigno. Like just a, well, like a... I felt uh, like I was like... I was like I the, was green, like, the I was, green Hulk was, I was like going to come out. I was like in a straitjacket. I had to rip it off. You know... That last moment that you had, nothing, by the way, with this guy is contrived. It's why, it's why I've always um, admired his, his public persona, like him or not, you know. It, it seems to me that if you can maintain yourself, not an act, not a play script, but yourself, the authenticity uh, in a place where authenticity is not regularly found, will carry a long way, especially as you have the bulk of 2018 to amass a candidacy here. Um, but your tie to Trump will sink you. I've said this to you privately. I said it on the radio on your announcement day. I'm saying it to you. Your Trump tie will kill your candidacy. Why are you stuck? I'm because you think you can get him in once? Because you think no, he'll come in no, for you? No, no, that's not the reason. You will no, lose no, I, your you, sorry you, political tale if you continue to fly on Trump's momentum. Now, i got to ask you a favor, because you're going to do this. We have nine months. I can see Dan York saying, his campaign is over. It's done. He just shot himself in the foot. It's all over. And then you might come back a day later and say, well, you know what, maybe I was a little too hot on him. Maybe it's not totally over. This is also a, a normal <laughs> routine where he analyzes me in order to get away from a question that I've asked. No, no, I'm going to answer the no, question. No, I'll be consistent. I, I, your, your conflict for me as a citizen, never mind as a broadcaster, I, 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 I want to see your, your energy and your authenticity um, shine in this race, and I want to see it contrasted to whoever you see in the general election. I think I think it will be a treat and, an, and, a, and, a, and a service to the constituents for your stuff to come out. Leave the Trump stuff behind. He got 38 when he was hot. He got 38 when he was hot, Joe. Dan, here's the, here's the thing with Trump. Underst try to separate me this way from Trump. Look at Trump in two ways. Look at his policies and look at Trump the man. You don't like Trump the man. I understand that. A lot of people have a lot of problems with his style, with his tweets, with everything that he does. But look at his policies. Look at his goals. Look at his objectives. Look at, about, look at how he's trying to fulfill his campaign promises. That's what, that's, that, I, I respect that because I am going to work very hard, as hard as I can to fulfill my campaign to promise. I think you, I, I, th I, I think you overstate this, this, this Trumpian commitment to fulfill campaign promises. I, I think it's all, I think it's all whimsical. I think it's all situational. I think it's all transactional. I think it's, I think none of it's ideological or philosophical. I don't think he thinks things through. I mean, if you sat him down, if I was sitting here with him right now and asked him to talk to me about all the nuances of making uh, the statement that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, he couldn't get past, uh, you know, page one. So well, I, I... I don't want to debate I, Trump with you. Well, you have to because you're the oh, chair of the I campaign. Okay. All right, okay. And you continue to talk about that. The, you actually said that the Republican Party wasn't Trump enough. That's what you said to Maddie well, on the radio the they other day. They don't stick up for him enough. They, they just don't stick up for him. The, for reasons that are obvious, both, both practical and political. Well, then they're smarter than I am. Right. Okay. On this particular okay. matter. But okay. that, see, not, not, not on your notes. 
Well, well you got all these notes. First of all, he's got I'm, all these notes I'm on not issues. Trump. That I'm last speech you made on the schools and the education, it was raw and it was in a connective to the entire community out there. I just think you're making a mistake, I mean, and, and, and I'm going to mention it, you're right, continually, because I think it's one step forward, two back for you, one step forward, two back for you. That's just, what am I supposed to do, coddle you and tell you, no, no I don't no, think no, that's no. what's no, going to happen I, I here? I appreciate your advice. I appreciate your advice. I really do. But I'm not, I can't run from him. See, if, if I run from him, then 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 I'm doing a disservice to my, my own well, you personal can't erase, beliefs. Well, you can't erase, well, you can't, well, okay, well, then fine. If it's your belief system, it's your, it's your interpretation of your belief system. Uh, so I'm just hoping the day comes when you get him and, and you can actually say, you know, I don't like him. I don't like his personality. When he, says, I when don't he like does something right, I'm on it. By the way, the tax cuts aren't middle income either. Right. So, so right. you I know mean, what? You know, yeah, I, these I, I, tax cuts are going to have a great effect on this country. They're going to help this economy in Rhode Island big time. Now, is everybody going to benefit? We're not going to really know until everything starts to to fall in place. But um, I, I don't want to come. I didn't come here to just defend Trump. I hope. Oh, well, it's, I the, hope. it's the noose around your neck. Yeah, well, You're going to be here dozens of times between now and 18, and we're going to be talking issues. I'm just telling you, in general, There's something I very controversial that I want to accomplish. Oh, wait a second. You know, he does have his own television show. That's a good sell. You'll want to stay tuned. It's important. We'll be right back. I'm actually in. I'm going to be running, running all the way through hard till next year. Uh, I'm not afraid of any primary opponents. I've got a lot of respect for both of these individuals, but the main difference is, you know, as legislators, they do a lot of talking, a lot of fighting on the floor. As a mayor, I've acted. You know, I've fixed problems. I've handled big budgets. I've handled many employee issues that have popped up and done what's right for all of our residents. And I'm proud of all the things that we. So that's how I found the Cranston mayor running for the second time. Remember, he's in the race. I mentioned two people. He was one of them. No longer is he one of them in the primary season. Patricia Morgan, of course, is the other. But you were revving up. You had something important you wanted well, to say. Well, one of the things that I want to do is I want to limit car inspections for all passenger cars. I think it's a very controversial thing to take on. But when you look at the statistics that are out there, we're one of 19 states that has car inspections. 31 states don't have it. Um, Rhode Island tends to always think they know more than everybody else, but when you have a state like Florida that doesn't have car inspections, a state like Connecticut that doesn't have them, uh, Massachusetts does, what we do is we force people to spend money unnecessarily because you have a lot of gas stations that are doing work, and I'm not saying they're all like that, but they, they, they're, they're in a position where they can take advantage of people, and many of them do. In Massachusetts, if you have your car inspected at one station, you can't have them repair it. You've got to go to the other place. So I think our system is really flawed. We're wasting a lot of time on it. The state is probably... What's the data say? I think this is a fascinating issue. What does the data say from the states that don't have it anymore? Are, there, are the cars less safe on the road? The, 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 there's like a 3% difference in accident uh, rates. But, higher? Uh, higher. But when you look at the insurance rates, so a few states it's a little more, and a few states it's a little less. So there's almost no real difference in states that have it. Here's what happens. The poorer people who cannot afford to get their car fixed either go with photocopies of inspection stickers, they buy inspection stickers on the black market, or they just drive without inspection stickers and hope they don't get caught. Because, you know, many times you bring a car to get inspected, it's going to cost you $800, $900 to get the car out. Mm. So it's the people who really get hit with it the hardest are the people who really, you know, they want to do everything right. Uh, they, they, they can make enough money to do it, but it's a big well, this, inconvenience. This will be a political common ground issue for people. They, they, I mean, it's that's a visceral thing. That's a hands-on, pocketbook, uh, tangible, life, everyday thing. And... Uh, I think it'll be freshly debated if you're going to sponsor that conversation, fine. I mean, obviously, Raimondo and Matty Yellow routine the other day, uh, a couple, three weeks ago, when it was learned that the computer system is now ready after, what, seven or eight years of a law that's on the books to tag you for a $250 right. fine to get re-registered because you don't have an right. inspection sticker in the computer system. 
approved. They waive that, which is incredible. I've never seen an administrative waiver of a law when you're capable of executing the law. I mean, what is this, a banana republic? It is a banana republic. Well, some... Gina Raimondo all of a sudden had the power to just do this. Well, you can do it because what what happens is a lot of legislation... I mean, what she's doing doesn't bother people, but the idea that she's doing something outside the legislative process and the correct constitutional process should bother people. Well, if you look at some of the laws, a lot of the laws give the departments the right to to fine up to $250, but it's it's you may do it, not that you shall do it. So if it had if it said that you I shall, sh do I think it. it's a shall, but it was just late because well, they didn't have a Well, if it's a shell, system. they would have had to do it. If if it's a shell, she would have had to do oh, it. Oh, you know what? Then I'm going to go back and research that because I'm pretty sure it's a shall. But it's a shell without the without the capability. The computer system couldn't do it, so the shell couldn't be right. couldn't be done. Right. Anyway, I get there. Let's go back to Fung. Um, you know, he was looking for a different kind of candidacy here. Uh, I mean, a campaign with you and Morgan. Now it's just Morgan. Maybe it's Gio Ferrosi. Who knows? You never know what's going to happen here. But you're out of the loop. Uh, were you afraid that you couldn't beat him? No. 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 Uh, you see Fung and Raimondo as closer to oh, the same than yeah, different? Absolutely. Same. I look at the two of them the same exact way. Why? Because they both try to ride the fence and be all things to all people. They're afraid to go in any one direction. They're afraid to do anything that's controversial. They're afraid that they're going to offend people. And uh, to me, that's a problem. I, I don't respect people that are, that are in the middle of the, the fence. Um, Fung will get chewed up by the Democrats in the, in the General Assembly. He'll get chewed up. He thinks he did great things in, 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 uh, in Cranston. He wants to take credit for Garden City. Garden City was a great developer that came in. A, they would have done it with or without Fung. We have a bleeding budget right now. This is the mechanical stuff of being an administrator. We're tens of millions of dollars short right now in this fiscal year and hundreds of millions of dollars short next year. You're going to have to in, in addition to your authentic thinking, some bluster, uh, and some, you know, real energy, you're going to have to have some administrative solutions. And you've got 30 seconds to tell me what we're going to do. One of my solutions is I want to have a team of, like, investigators under the governor's control that I can put into different departments to see where money can be saved, to see what what redundant You're going to add systems. bureaucracy to, I'm not to gonna save money? I'm not going to add any bureaucracy. I'm going to do it from existing FTEs. So Full-time employees. Right. So I'm not going to add, if anything, I would like to reduce the amount of FTEs in state government and reduce the budget as a All whole. Right. All right. Well, you're off and running. You're not going to come back next month and say, ah, you know what, I'm running as a Democrat <laughs> or anything, are you? I don't think that's ever going to happen. You feel good? You feel free? I feel free, yeah. I feel great. I got it off. It feels free. I feel free. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too. It's going to be an interesting 18. I'll tell you what's up tomorrow next. Uh, Joe Trillo maintains that level of intrinsic excitement and authenticity. It's going to mean votes. It's going to mean votes. Uh, he seems free as an independent candidate. It's kind of interesting. 18 is going to be interesting. And we have our best pollster in the state, Joe Fleming, talk all about 18 tomorrow night. See it on the radio 3-2 on WPRL. Good night.